All right, looks to be about 2.30, so I think we're supposed to start. So, uh, okay, everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Good, okay. Uh, so uh, this talk is about uh, Mo, a project I started about six months ago. Um, I'm Stephen Little. You're at YAPCNA 2013, in case you weren't sure. Um, also, it's in Austin, Texas, again, in case you weren't sure. Um, and I believe that's the date. I can't confirm that at all, though. Um, okay, so uh, um, how many of you know what Mo is? It's not Larry. It's not Larry. No, no, no. <laughs> the sequel will be Curly, though. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, so I'll do a quick overview. So I announced this project at the Orlando, Wor or Orlando Pearl Workshop this year. Um, and the goal here is to experiment uh, and try and create a new runtime for Pearl 5, um, but not necessarily for the Pearl 5 you all program in today. Um, I actually had a couple feature additions and feature removals that I wanted to do, so I'm calling this an ultra-modern Pro 5. Um, so what that means exactly is uh, I wanted to get a more consistent syntax and a sane grammar. The, the Pro 5 grammar is known to be understandable probably by Larry. And No, okay, not by Larry. <laughs> he denies it. Um, but I wanted to also add a, a real AST in there. Um, I wanted to, which, which would help create better tooling support. Um, this is something that I noticed when I started playing around with uh, uh, JavaScript and some of the JavaScript variants that are out there, like TypeScript, that they have a very uh, 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 well-defined AST, and therefore these things plug into IDEs and editors and stuff like that extremely nicely. Something that might be nice for us. Um, I wanted a less insane runtime. Um, as Liz mentioned in her talk earlier, uh, you know, the, the Pro 5 uh, internals uh, are commonly referred to as Jenga internals uh, because if you take one piece out, the whole thing might come crashing down. Um, I wanted to have a proper MOP, a method object, or a uh, uh, meta object protocol. Um, uh, this was a project, uh, this, the, the reason for this came out of a project that actually was what inspired this, which was my attempt to bring a, a MOP into the current Pro 5 core. Uh, I ran into some issues. Um, in general, I wanted to try and uh, bring that vision that Jesse Vincent laid out in his Pearl 516 and Beyond talk, which was a slimmer core, meaning just a language, not a language, plus a Unix toolkit, plus a networking toolkit, all thrown into one. Um, I wanted to kind of kill excess. Um, I never really learned excess, but every time I looked at it, I, ju I just couldn't get my head around it. Um, I know it's sort of one of those things that a lot of people don't like. Um, I wanted a modern VM platform. Um, I really don't care what that is. Currently, right now, the experiment is going on in the JVM, uh, but it could be any of these. Um, I wanted to have the ability to do that. Um, as a lot of other, Python can do that, uh, Ruby can do that to some degree, uh, JavaScript obviously is all over the place. Um, and of course, that would give us the possibility of doing cross-language sharing. So while DBI is great, JDBC can do things that DBI can't. You know, and what if we could use JDBC from Perl? Wouldn't that be cool? Um, so anyway, after this announcement, a lot of people, uh, some very, very smart people came up to me, offered me a lot of advice. I listened to every single bit of it, and I spent probably the first two weeks actually just mulling over these things, thinking them through, talking, discussing, all this kind of stuff like that. And in the end, I came to a decision, which was, I wanted to write code. <laughs> I was sick of talking. I wanted to, it was, it was making my head hurt. Um, and while I had a decent idea of what I wanted, um, I wasn't sure all the way through, and I wanted to just feel my way through it. Uh, so I dived into writing code. Um, I didn't know a couple of things for sure, though. I wanted to start as a basis with Pro 5. I wanted to remove some features. I wanted to add some features. Um, and I wanted to execute on a vision that had sort of started in my head with some of the P5 mop work that I did uh, previously. Um, I wanted the core to feel as much like Perl 5, but I wanted to steal as much as I could from Perl 6. Um, Larry's been doing an awesome job creating all these features. I mean, what, what is an ultramodern Perl 5? Perl 6, right? So I didn't want to quite go that far. So I'm kind of calling this Perl 5 and a half, maybe? Okay? So that, that, and that's not necessarily the number. We're not going to get into version number arguments. Okay? That, that's just a description of the language, potentially. Nah. <laughs> uh, okay, sell it to Rennie. Sell it to Rennie. <laughs> right. Highest bidder. Um, 
So I've only got 20 minutes, um, and I promised uh, Todd I wouldn't go over, um, and I probably will. But uh, I did want to point out one thing before I dive into telling you about what, what we've done with Mo and where we are and the status, um, which is that uh, Mo is a thought experiment, okay? This is not an attempt to, uh, to actually create uh, the canonical new runtime, okay? This is, uh, it's, it, it's based on the Pugs project, and it's based on the Pugs project uh, not only just with the OFUN aspect, but also uh, one of the key goals of Pugs was to give the Perl 6 language designers something to play around with, something that they could actually tactilely feel the language with and see if what, was, what they were thinking was what they actually got. So that's sort of my goal, both for myself and anybody else who, who's interested in sort of what the next step of Perl 5 might look like, that's what I'm trying to do with Mo. Um, so I can't stress enough that I'm trying to show a way forward and I'm not necessarily trying to be a way forward. So one of the big things that people complained about was, you know, you're trying to put Perl in the JVM. That startup is too slow. I'll never be able to do one-liners. Well, I'm not trying to do that, so don't worry. <laughs> I'm also not trying to assert Perl, five, Perl, Perl 6, rather, okay? The Perl 6, Perl 6 effort and this effort, I believe, can, can continue along together. Um, hopefully, we can give back and forth to one another. I, I mean, I'm, right now, I'm just stealing completely wholesale from them. But eventually, hopefully, I can offer them something back. Um, but the ultimate goal was to find a language somewhere in the middle that's not the Perl 5 that John Orr went through the cup about in 2000, but is not quite Perl 6. It's somewhere in the middle that feels comfortable in the hands of a Perl 5 programmer, but is a gateway drug to Perl 6. So now, so now we're going to go into what we have. So uh, the project's moving along. Uh, we've got about six months going. Uh, there's really two developers, myself and, uh, and I'm going to mispronounce his name, uh, Prakesh. Oh, hold on, I got notes in here somewhere. Oh, I don't remember. Prakesh, I'll say that. Uh, he's. <laughs> um, I'm very bad at name pronunciation. So uh, he's been working really hard with me on this, um, and he's he's probably about half. He's probably done about half the commits at this point. Um, but we're sort of moving forward, and we're just like I said, we're feeling our way through it. Um, so right now we have your basic literals, double quoted, single quoted. We have integers. We have numbers. We have boolean, proper, true, and a false. Uh, we have an undef. Uh, we have a pair. Okay, this is borrowed from Perl 6. Uh, we have hashes, which essentially are a list of pairs whose keys are unique. Um, we have array refs. Uh, and we have code. And we're borrowing the Perl 6 pointy code syntax here. Um, I want you to notice that the, uh, with the hash and the array, they're both using the, uh, what we say in Perl 5 is the reference syntax. Um, that's because we don't, we don't differentiate from references and, and values anymore. Uh, or rather, I, Mo doesn't. Uh, everything is an object, okay? So it's objects all the way, way down, similar to Ruby, similar to JavaScript and stuff like that. So there's no such thing as a list anymore, there's just arrays, and, in there, and they're an array object. Um, all of these have classes backing them from what you can call methods on. Uh, I also removed the implicit conversions. Uh, they're now explicit, um, which you'll see very shortly. Um, and well, actually, with the only one exception of int and num, uh, will sort of do the right thing when you when you fiddle with them back and forth. So then for operators, we've got the logical. Uh, we've got the double and, the double uh, or, and the turning operator. Comparison operators on numbers and or uh, integers and nums. We've got the string operators. We've got uh, a handful of mathematical operators, probably not all of them, I think. I don't think we, have, we don't have bit shift and all that kind of stuff. Uh, string, again, Perl 6. So it, it's the, the uh, squiggly line. Um, and that's because methods now use the dot for the call. This was a controversial change. Um, I'm still not 100% sold on it. Um, but a lot of people really asked about it, and considering that most of the rest of the world uses the dot operator for method send, it seemed like a sensible way to go. Uh, these are the coercion operators, again, swipe wholesale from Perl 6. Uh, that's the Boolean, the string, and the uh, numeric, and it essentially forces the variable into that context. Um, we just recently got regular expression uh, uh, operator. We don't have the bang tilde, but we have, we have that. We have very uh, small regex support we'll go into later. Actually, here we go. I have his name here. Prakash Kalasa? I'm not sure. I'm probably saying it totally wrong. But anyway, he's been one of the biggest contributors, um, so I have to thank him. Um, he's actually been doing sort of a very interesting thing. He's been taking, uh, there was a, 
a course developed at some point where it was 99 problems to solve with Prolog, and then somebody ported that to 99 problems to solve with Scala, and he's now in the process of porting that to 99 problems to solve with Mo. So, and this is actually become, becoming part of the test suite. So it's kind of interesting because they're, they're, they're very sort of computer science-y problems, but Mo is, we're, we're basically, uh, he's using that to drive development forward. So it's sort of example-driven development there, in a way. Um, and then lastly, we've got the range operator. Um, and all of these, again, from Perl 6, these are all methods. They're all methods on the objects that they're, they're being referred to, but we use this infix, prefix, postfix uh, syntax, and we also have the circumflex and circumpostflex, flex post thing stuff. All, the, all that stuff from Perl 6, again, we're swiping. Um, I don't have support yet, or I don't, I'm not planning support yet for, ah, I hate Keynote. Sorry. <laughs> um, I don't yet have support for, uh, being able to add your own operators and do operator overloading. I'm not sure, I'm not a very good parser writer, um, so unless I can convince Larry to contribute to the project, uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to get a parser that sophisticated in there, but who knows, we'll see. Um, so for uh, statements, we have your basic if, else if, else, uh, unless, else if, else. Um, for and for each, we're keeping the Perl 5 definitions of these, not the Perl 6 definition. Uh, Perl 6 basically got rid of for each, just left for, and uh, turned the old style C for loops into, uh, is it loop keyword, Larry? Yeah, loop keyword. Um, so I, I, I like for each, so I wanted to keep it. Um, uh, we got while and, while and until, um, and just about all of these actually also work as statement modifiers now. Um, again, that was a Prakash uh, uh, contribution. Um, we parse, try, catch, and finally, but it's a no-op right now. Um, this is because I wanted to focus on getting the actual, so, so if you think of exception handling, there's really two sides to it. There's the try and the catch blocks and the finally blocks, uh, and then there's the exceptions themselves. If you don't have a well thought out exception object and, and, and sort of an exception system, then it doesn't matter whether you have try, catch, and finally. You, you'll get stuck in the same mire that we have right now with the, uh, you know, all the crazy string, is, is it a string, is it this, is that. Um, so we're, we're gonna get to that soon. Um, I also think too that I'm going to need either a match case style statement. So if any of you pro uh, programmed in uh, Scala or OCaml or Haskell, um, I think Haskell calls it something different. Um, uh, you know that. Um, or potentially given when. Uh, the trick there is match case really requires some sort of type checking where given and given when requires a smart operator, so I have to decide which, which sort of rat hole I want to go down on that. Um, but anyway, we're, those, those are sort of getting there. Um, we also have some built-ins. Um, we have say, we have print, we have warn, we have caller uh, with an optional index you pass it in, sleep, system, uh, eval, not, chur, ord, uh, those are weird that I put them in, rand, uh, and die. Um, one thing to note here, these are proper signatures, okay, and they actually get checked. Um, we're, we're following the profile or Perl 6 signature spec on this one. Um, which I think a lot of the Perl uh, 5 signature add-on models modules seem to do. Um, oh, we've also got ex exit. Uh, and we've also got a couple of the built-in um, uh, variables. So argv, the environment, uh, the ink, uh, the ink array, and the ink hash. Um, getting rid of the dollar sign at, it's just a giant mess. Um, we're going with the Perl 6 idea of everything is an exception. So even if you throw a string with die, I'm going to turn it into an exception. And it's going to get caught with the dollar sign bang, okay? Um, we also, uh, I'm giving you access, uh, you know, any of you familiar with Moose know that I like to give you full access to the entire guts of everything, so that's all planned for this. So you've got access to the actual runtime object, uh, the current package, the current class, the current invocant, um, and the current routine uh, being executed. These are the Perl 6 twiggles. I think I got this right, Larry, with the question mark in there. You have a whole spec of the different ones in there, so I, I may be a little off, but. Um, but I basically wanted to give access to these variables, and I opted out of the double underscore thing that Perl 5 does, because the fact of the matter is, is the double underscore is just sort of a weird bear word that happens to be handled at compile time and, and does this little magic. Uh, these are runtime accessible variables, so I thought they should look like variables instead of looking like basically, well, like Python 
methods, actually, <laughs> to be honest. Um, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Larry endorses it. Um, so uh, one thing you'll notice it's conspicuously missing, and I just got water on my laptop. Um, <laughs> Uh, no push, no pop, no shift, all those array operators, uh, or array built-ins, no hash built-ins, no file handle built-ins, uh, no string, no number, and no just whatever defined is defined on. Um, this is because these are now all methods, okay? They're never gonna show up, uh, well actually they might show up in Mo, but right now they're all defined as methods. So you call these as methods on the objects. Um, Eventually, yeah, maybe we'll add support for these as a functional interface uh, as well, but for the time being, and, and if they're in a functional interface, then it's really just gonna do what this does, okay? So this just calls, the, the, the function version of say calls the object version of say. So it just delegates off to that. So, um, and say is actually defined in the any class. So again, we're borrowing from Perl 6. I'm actually not sure if that's where you guys define it, but. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, there are no Unix built-ins, there are no formats, there are no uh, networking built-ins, all that stuff. That should be in a module. Just as Jesse Vincent laid out in his Perl 516 talk, we should move all that stuff into a module. It'll be much easier to maintain, it'll be much easier going forward, it's one less thing for the core to have. So I've got no support for it right now. Anybody wants to come and add support for it, you can have a module. So. All right, so that's kind of the boring stuff. Uh, let's jump into some of the more interesting stuff. So uh, we got subroutines. Uh, we got sub subroutine signatures. Um, you can see here that array an array is the first variable there, so we're not doing any flattening. There's no concept of list. Everything's an array object or it's not an array object. Um, the ternary, ternary operator, we've got some method calls going on here. We've got some recursion, all this kind of stuff like that. Um, we support the most of the full Perl six spec and signatures. There's some stuff that we're we're not we're not doing yet. Um, we've got positional, um, positional with defaults, um, optional, which really is just a positional with a default that's undef. Um, we've got Slurpee, so everything after this gets sort of slurped all up and put into an array ref, or array ref. I gotta stop saying that. Put into an array object. Um, that means if you put an array object at the end there, you're gonna get an array of an array. Um, we have name parameters, uh, which basically means I'm expecting a pair object to be put there, where the key of that pair is the uh, name of that variable minus the sigil. Um, and then name slurpee, which basically is just slopping it all into a hash, so I'm expecting a whole bunch of pair objects. Um, these are all tested and, and uh, uh, what do you call it, they're, they're checked at runtime. Um, we don't have support yet for compile time checking. I would like it, um, but we're not quite there yet. Um, we also support uh, uh, anonymous subroutines, and you'll notice we've got the, 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 the ampersand sigil here. Um, so I know some of you might be having Perl 4 flashbacks here, um, but it's actually very useful uh, because you don't want to, you know, putting this into a scaler would sort of, it, it wouldn't give, the, the beauty of, of uh, sigils is that it, it gives you type information. It's sort of like um, uh, Hungarian notation without the using words, or numbers, or letters, rather. Um, so uh, I brought that back. Um, also, we have the routine here. So you can see how the routine can be used. Um, this can potentially you know, help uh, avoid some garbage collection issues and stuff like that if you use it in this way. Of course, still giving you enough rope to shoot yourself in the foot if you wanted to really create some garbage collection issues on your own. Um, one thing that, uh, I'm not sure if Perl 6 does this or not, but uh, this kind of fell out of the air when I was fiddling around with some stuff. Um, if you have a, ver or have a subroutine uh, named double and you uh, attempt to address a variable which is ampersand double in there, if it can't find a variable ampersand double, it just looks to see if there's potentially a subroutine within the same scope that has an ampersand double. And if it is, then it says, oh, you probably meant to take a reference to that so you could pass it to something like map. Yeah, it, okay, yeah. I, I thought it was, I couldn't not that find. Way, not, that way. not that way, okay, okay. Well, I, I could, you'll have to point out to where that is, because I couldn't find it in the spec. The, 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 the subroutine is stored in the lexical scope with the ampersand. Sub, so sub same. Okay, same, same thing. Okay, so I'll just wave my hands and say it does work sort of the same, kind of, not really. Yeah, okay. Um. <laughs> 
Okay, okay, good, good. Um, okay, we also have very, very rudimentary support for traits. Um, I pretty much added this only so that I could make my own test more, which I'll show you a little bit later. Um, so here we have is export, which basically obviously means this should get exported from the package if it's used in another context. Um, speaking of packages, we have packages. Um, so I'm only supporting the block version of packages. Um, eventually, yes, I'd like to support the, uh, the colon, the whole file package thing. Um, but block is kind of easy at the moment. Uh, we have version numbers and um, uh, uh, authority. Uh, that are in line within the name. Again, Perl 6, we're still in here. Um, part of the reason for that is because I don't, I'm not sure I really want to support our variables because that always felt really dirty to me. And I know there's a lot of work to try and get out of some of the bad habits that we all built upon that. Um, I'm not like totally against them, but I, I don't want to do that stuff myself. So if you want to, Patch is welcome. Are you self lexically scoped? <sighs> uh, what do you mean by lexically scoped? You can access them outside of the package. So yeah, they're our subs. Yeah. But they're not our variables. So that's. <laughs> um, so anyway, you can see that in there. And actually, uh, the packages can packages can have, obviously, subroutines in them. They, they do have their own lexical environment, so my, my variables work within it. Um, uh, they do not have. Like, they don't have the our stuff. Um, they can contain subroutines. They can also contain. Uh, sub packages, which actually this gets turned into this uh, internally, um, so that we have that. And you notice that the um, uh, the authority in the version is just on the end one. Uh, we don't sort of back that up out of there. Um, packages can also contain classes, um, and the packages are no longer classes. There's no linkage between the two. They're two separate things. Again, Perl six. Um, which sorry, brings me to the full object system, which is this. So uh, this right here is the whole reason why I started this project, because I tried to do this in Perl 5, and it didn't work, and I ran into a lot of, a lot of issues. Um, so the first thing to point about the object system, fully bootstrapped, um, class is an instance of class, class is a subclass of object, and object itself is an instance of class. Um, that's what that diagram is trying to represent. Um, just know that that means it's fully bootstrapped, which means you'll have a full mop. You'll have everything that you have in Moose. This is the same uh, uh, class model that Moose uses as well, um, with some finer differences. Um, it also means that uh, classes are first class objects. So again, they're not just sort of a random string that you could use as a class, or you could use as a string. You can do whatever you want. Uh, you can. Uh, call methods on it, so we've got a few things like name and version that are supported on there right now. Um, you can also put it into a variable, uh, and you can call new on that. You can also return it from a subroutine, and then you can call new on the return value of that subroutine. Okay, so classes are really first class objects that are in there. Uh, we've also got an object hierarchy. Again, a lot of this is from Perl 6. I did strip out some of the stuff um, that's needed in Perl 6 to support some of the crazier stuff in Perl 6 that I don't plan to support language-wise. Um, I'd be interested, Patrick and Larry, if you go over this and see if I'm completely missing something uh, that I'm going to run into later on. Um, but I've got the basics. Uh, you know, uh, class is a subclass of object. Any is a root object. Uh, like I said, that's where say is defined. That's where defined is defined. Um, we've got an undef object, which is kind of weird. Um, the more I program in functional languages, the more I hate the idea of an undefined context. But uh, scalar, which has the boolean, the string, the int, the num, uh, the exception objects as well, um, and regex objects, uh, arrays, hashes, pairs, IOs, and code. Um, we don't do any type checking right now. The way this, the way this sort of system works is that a type is associated with a variable, which but that type is defined by the sigil, or the sigil. So you can't put anything that is not under scholar, or under the scalar inside something with a dollar sign sigil. And you can't put anything other than array into an array sigil. And you can't put anything other than a hash into a hash sigil. Uh, pair, IO, and code are kind of, well, code has a code sigil. Uh, pair and IO are kind of outliers. Uh, I don't want to keep adding sigils, so they'll probably just fall under scalar in some context. But that is type checked. But that object has a pointer to the class that uh, that the uh, that it is an instance of. So eventually, we should be able to support a my type 
uh, variable type situation later on down the road. But right now, no plans for it. So uh, classes themselves. Um, you can see uh, we're, we've got attributes, we've got methods. Uh, methods have signatures. Um, we're borrowing the Twiggle, uh, again, from Perl 6. Currently, we only support the private ones, so the dollar sign bang. Um, or actually, it doesn't have to be dollar sign. It could be an array. Or it could be any sigil, uh, but sigil bang. Uh, eventually, we will support the automated uh, accessor generation and all that kind of stuff. And potentially, I guess, we're gonna also going to have to add the traits, too, for the isReadO and isReadWrite um, in there as well. Um, I think, am I going over? Yeah, I'm going over. Okay, I'm gonna go quick. Uh, so, all right, uh, there's inheritance. Um, classes can also be inside packages. Um, they get, you just give the fully qualified name. Uh, so again, like, like subroutines. Um, we've got other stuff. We've got very rudimentary regu regular expression support. Um, right now, it's uh, kind of it's delegating to the Java regex engine, which I know is like a sin, um, but it, it was the easiest thing to get in there right now um, until we can get some sort of Java Perl compatible regular expression engine going on. Um, but we, we can call methods on them. Uh, we have substitution substitutions as a method. Uh, if you're familiar with with uh, JavaScript regex. Uh, uh, stuff this should look similar. Um, we've also got the auto boxing. Um, you can call if you have a anonymous subroutine or a subroutine reference. You can call it by doing the dot. You can also call it by doing call. You can also call apply and pass in your own uh, argument array. Um, again, JavaScript. If you're familiar with that, you'll this will look familiar. Um, what else we got? We have multi-variable assignments. Uh, we got the range operator. You no longer have to do this unless you really want an array of arrays where you only have one array inside there. Um, if you do that, it blows up because the signals are not matching. Um, again, that's not, uh, it's not, uh, what do you call it? Uh, it's not, com not compile time, but we're, we're looking to get there. Um, and now we'll, well, I had a live demo here planned. I'm going to do it anyway because it's only trout we're waiting for. <laughs> Don't forgive me. Uh oh. There we go. Okay. So it ain't fast, but we're getting there. Okay. So one of the things uh, that Pugs sort of contributed to the Perl 6 community was its test suite. Okay. The project itself sort of died off. Um, I think there's one guy still trying to keep it alive, but it's it's sort of a it's a part time thing. Um, but the test suite was there, um, and the test suite I believe is what has you built the uh, the what is it the Perl six burn or whatever roast roast, roast. Um, so you know that's there so my hope is that even if this project dies and it never sees the light of day this test suite will hopefully be useful for somebody somewhere potentially for moving Perl five forward another way Rennie it's all yours if I die I'm, I'm bequeathing it to you. Um, <laughs> But so, you know, and, and this is sort of the fun part right now for me because I actually get to program in the, oh crap, hold on. I get to program in the language that I want to program in. Um, which, speaking of which, a uh, few quick examples. Test more. Um, so uh, you can see we've got, well actually, so here all the way down here, uh, there's our package more. We're exporting all the normal test more things out of there. Uh, you can see it delegates to a test builder object. That test builder object starts right here. It's a nice class. It's got a test tap output there, which is all defined up there. Um, this is all up on GitHub too, so if you want to take a closer look at it, because I'm skimming pretty fast here. Um, but all this, this is this is what's running that test suite in that other window right now. Um, we have sub methods, uh, which are a uh, Perl six thing again. Uh, they're essentially private methods. They're not in the dispatch in the general dispatch chain, only in the local dispatch. Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've all got all that. Then, uh, where's my cursor? Strings. Here's what some of the tests look like. Okay, so we've got a string literal, and we're, we're calling isa on it. Ask if it's a string. Um, you can create a string new uh, if you want. Uh, da, 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 da. You see first. So again, we're seeing all, all this stuff is all methods on objects. Going on, going on, going on, going on, going on. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, where's, where's my cursor again? Um, arrays, same thing. We do have the array uh, access syntax. Um, we don't change the sigil here. Uh, again, like Perl 6, because I don't know about you guys, I've always thought that was very confusing. If you don't think it's confusing, you can go commiserate with John Anderson over there, because he and I disagree on this one. 
Um, this one gets long. Um, and then the, well, you already saw that, so let's skip to this. Um, so these are two of the two of the moose examples that I really liked, uh, so that I had in there. Um, uh, one nice thing here is that uh, attributes are accessible in your subclasses. Um, not entirely sure whether this is kosher, but I kind of liked it. It was a little bit easier than having to write accessors. Um, and that's about it. So, but hold on. So live demo of Doom. Uh, so what's next, and then I'll wrap it up and let Trout have this. Um, the next step I want to do is really expose the mop in the runtime. Um, more tests, test, test, test. Contributions welcome. Uh, implement roles. Uh, we have a single inheritance object model, so roles really need to be there. Um, uh, get that try catch in the match case or given when or whatever we want on there. Um, and then later on, I actually want to start wrapping the Scala actors. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that. If you're not, I recommend you go read uh, up on them. They're really, really cool. Um, and I want to wrap Java threads just because I probably should, but I'd rather just stick with actors. Um, but anyway, that's it. Questions, and I'll probably have to take them out in the hall because I think it's Trout's turn in like two minutes. Assuming he gets here. Okay.